Excellent. Well, we are going to go ahead and get this webinar kicked off. Um, we're excited. We want to thank you for taking time out of your day to attend the Altius event today. My name is Sarah Lampy, and I handle the marketing here at Altius, and I will be moderating today's webinar. Again, I just wanted to cover just a couple of logistics. Um, you can fill in any questions that you have throughout the webinar in the chat box on your screen to the right, or you can tweet at Altius USA with the hashtag FlexAFEWebinar, and we will address those at the end of the webinar. So I'm excited to introduce Altius and our speakers for today's webinar. Altius is a global provider of performance management solutions with over 20 years of experience in both business intelligence and oil and gas projects. From this experience, we have developed a suite of products built upon a single platform that enable companies to unify business processes in a single integrated environment. These products have been used to facilitate budgeting, planning, forecasting, and capital expenditure tracking. Our speakers for today are Helen Reed. Helen is a consultant at Altius with 14 years of experience delivering software solutions to companies across several different industries. Her area of focus includes data warehouse design, data integration, and performance management solutions. Michael Welch is Senior Solutions Architect at Altius. He has been with us since 2009 where he helps companies apply comprehensive technology solutions to solve business process and data challenges. He is the primary architect for the Flex AFE Tracker solution and helps companies simplify and improve their AFE process. So we're going to just go over just how the webinar is organized quickly. We'll start by discussing a few goals of the oil and gas industry. We'll then move on to challenges within the AFE process. And we'll wrap up by demonstrating an enterprise solution that not only solves challenges within the AFE process, but automates the process for improved efficiency. So with that, I'm going to pass it over to Helen Reed to start discussing industry goals. Helen? Thank you, Sarah. After years of high and rising oil prices led to a long-standing oil price of more than $100 per barrel, new extraction technologies have opened up fresh sources of supply that suggest a much lower price per barrel, according to Deloitte Center for Energy Solutions. With this new normal of lower oil prices, producers are really forced to get much more efficient. According to MIT Sloan Management Review and Deloitte's 2015 Global Study of Digital Business, the oil and gas industry's digital maturity is among the lowest, at just 4.68 on a scale of 1 to 10, with 1 being least mature and 10 being most mature. And less digitally mature organizations tend to focus on individual technologies and have strategies that are decidedly operational in focus, according to the study. So oil and gas companies can reap considerable value by developing a cost-effective digital strategy that includes enterprise technology solutions that will lay the foundation for data integration and accessibility across the enterprise. From our experience working with both oil and gas majors as well as mid-sized companies, we've identified some common indicators of digital immaturity within the AFE process. Some of these examples are a manual, paper-based system that's both time-consuming and makes inefficient use of resources, a lack of control over the AFE process flow, multiple systems that really don't work well together and are expensive to maintain and difficult to support, and poor visibility of valuable data. To better illustrate these challenges, let's take a closer look at the flow of data within the AFE process. Let's consider a drilling project which starts with an engineer requesting bids from pipe suppliers. These bids may be paper copies sent in the mail. 
And based on these bids, the engineer then begins the ASE process. The engineer submits a detailed construction cost estimate to accounting for approval. Let's just say he sends this over in Excel, over to accounting. And then Land sends the lease, lease documents in PDF also to accounting, and JV partners are emailed a copy of the ASE. And this is just a snapshot at the onset of the process. This doesn't include all of the back and forth these participants will go through to complete the approval process. This back and forth is pushing and pulling data from normal systems. As you can see on the screen, we've got examples of accounting systems, well systems, and other systems that hold budgeting, well, and lease information, all used within the AFE process. Oil and gas companies are producing massive amounts of data. And in the AFE process alone, data is being produced by multiple parties in multiple formats and it's being pushed and pulled across a variety of different systems and applications. Not all parties involved in the AFE lifecycle have visibility and accessibility to the data that they need for analytics and business insights. And for some of them, by the time they actually get this data and this data is pulled together and analyzed, it's become stale and unuseful to the business. And the insights held within this data are very valuable to the company. It's been estimated that only 1% of the information gathered is being made available to oil and gas decision makers. According to a study published August 14th of this year by Deloitte. So what does this translate to for the business? It translates to a breakdown in the AFE process. Some examples that we have seen include a lack of control over the approval process, which often means projects are started without appropriate pr approval. AFE data getting lost or being entered incorrectly, which might lead to duplication of effort, recreating AFEs or creating supplements. And errors such as costs put against AFEs for which there is no remaining budget, leading to budget overruns. And the overall AFE process just taking too long, resulting in a failure to comply with contractual agreements. This is why we created a technology platform that will help oil and gas companies set the stage for a digital strategy moving forward and help companies to become more digitally mature. Flex AFE Tracker is an end-to-end -end solution for the AFE process built on the Flex MI platform. And I'll talk more about the Flex platform in a moment. Within Flex AFE Tracker, users interact with the data in the AFE process in a variety of ways. Data is captured via Flex input forms. And these are accessed through the Flex portal. These forms are completely customizable and exactly fit the data, data capture requirements of each individual company. Users receive real-time notifications as the AFE progresses and users can approve or reject AFEs from within the Flex portal. Other users might interact with the data through one of the many reporting and analysis options. Data connectors allow for data from existing systems, such as accounting and well systems, to be seamlessly integrated with the data within Flex AFE Tracker. And an optional master data management module allows the business users to maintain the master data used within the AFE process. Our experience in working with oil and gas companies over the past few decades has shown us that when someone comes to us with AFE process challenges, it's not really just about the AFE process, it's about solving something much bigger. And we see it as solving a complete set of business processes with a comprehensive platform approach. So the Flex MI platform upon which Flex AFE Tracker is built, consists of a central Flex repository that brings data together from across the enterprise, a workflow engine that automates the business process flow, a multi-dimensional database for slice and dice analytics and comprehensive reporting and performance monitoring, and security to manage internal user access and safeguard against external threats. 
The platform provides a holistic strategy for continual process improvement for the business. I'm now going to hand over to Mike, who's going to go into much more detail and demonstrate Flex AFE Tracker and how it works in an oil and gas company. Thank you, Helen. Let's just switch screen shares and <coughs> walk through this demo. Let the screen refresh here real quick. All right, great. Uh, so, yes, thanks again. Uh, my name is um, Mike Welch, the senior um, architect for the Flex Safety Tracker. And Helen has done a fantastic job explaining how, in today's current oil and gas environment of low oil prices, the need for increased efficiency is paramount and how becoming more digitally mature is a very powerful step in the direction of improved efficiency for an oil and gas company. What I'd like to do now is look at an example of how digital maturity in the AFE, the AFE process using Flex AFE Tracker can provide great improvements to data integration, workflow visibility and efficiency, and data visibility. Now please keep in mind that while today's demo focuses on AFEs in the oil and gas industry, Flex AFE Tracker is actually industry agnostic and can be used in any number of industries from construction to medical, finance, housing, manufacturing, and many more. So I guess first things first, the screen, what you're seeing on the screen here, this is Flex. Whether you're using Flex AP Tracker, Flex Planning, or any other Flex product, this is the general look and feel. Looking at the title bar, we can see, <coughs> excuse me, the name of our current model, Alpizo Upstream. The search text box, which allows us to find AFEs, reports, people, et cetera, within, side, within Flex. The current active model, which is our Altismo AFE model, and my profile details, which is where I would go to view messages, change preferences, et cetera. On the left side of the screen, we have our navigation. Today, we're going to look at the AFE capture, workflow, and reports pages. So now that that's out of the way, let's go ahead and dive in. The example we're going to look at today is actually quite a simple one, but illustrates <clears throat> huge benefits of a, huge, of a digital AFE system. Here we see the business process of our fictitious upstream oil and gas company. This workflow is quite straightforward, but highly representative of many of the business processes we've seen with our clients. Now, I'm not going to walk through this workflow in its entirety. Instead, what I'd like to do is look at a couple specific pieces of this process and highlight some of the key features and functionality of the Flex AFE Tracker. So I'm going to start out by going ahead and jumping to the AFP capture screen. And I'm going to go ahead and enter in some prerequisite data just to get some things out of the way here, get to a screen that is actually of interest. Now, the AFP capture step of almost any AFP process is the most crucial, since this is where the bulk of the data will be provided. This means that any mistakes, misunderstandings, or misinterpretations of the business's current state could lead to inefficiencies later on in the workflow, because of approval and submission back and forth due to erroneous data, incorrect process flow due to inaccurate AFP data such as accounts, partners, and working interests, and uninformed approvals due to inaccuracies in the AFP cost and account details. Making sure the data is correct at this point can alleviate many potential headaches later on. To ensure the correctness of this data, having visibility of and access to other systems can prove quite useful and necessary. However, in this example, we're not only going to we're not only importing data from other systems, but we're also mapping data within Flex AFE itself. This allows us to build data value dependencies to limit user options and ensure data correctness. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of this data interaction now. On the screen you see here, this is one of our AFE capture screens. It's split into two sections. At the top here, we have our AFE metadata, which we use to identify regional and partner information, as well as start and end dates and other pieces of um, high-level AFE information, and down towards the bottom, we have our cost information. And what we can see is as I choose the company, in this case, we have Altismo East and West, a couple of things will happen. One, the drop-downs below, which are, which are dependent on my company, will change depending on which company I select. This obviously will alleviate a lot of human error by only providing options that are actually valid. You'll also see is in the partner working interest section, it's actually going to put my company here because I know that this is the Altismo company that's going to be a partner on this project. Again, filling out information we already know without having the user to do extra, having to do extra work. We'll also select our well identifier, which is delimited by Egypt. 
and we'll select our JOA identifier, which has also been limited by our well. What this will do is this will help us identify what partners will be involved in this project and import any existing uh, agreements of working interest from a, our accounting system. Again, this is one of our points of, of data integration. We're bringing in our partners and the associate working interest per project from accounting. Other pieces of information that may be of interest, if I go ahead and do a couple other options here. As I scroll down, you'll see that the accounts that have been brought in are actually specific to the project type I selected. In this case, a plug and abandon project. If I had chosen a different project such as well services or well work, the list of accounts here would much likely be different. We only want to show valid information and valid options to a user at any time to limit both human error and inefficiencies. Also, if I jump back to the master, this is kind of a high-level view of this project and scroll down. We can also see our budget information being brought in. This is information that's coming from our accounting system that represents the annual approved budget for this scope of work. And below that, we can see any AFEs and the aggregated cost of those AFEs that have already been submitted against that same scope of budget. In addition, we're also integrating with our DOA system. By specifying who the owner of this AFE is, I'll go ahead and take ownership myself. The system is smart enough to know, based on the DOA structure and authorities, who will be necessary to approve this AFE given the cost. Now, I haven't provided costs yet, so right now it only has Noel Phillips as the, uh, the only DOA approver. Let's go ahead and add some costs and make the DOA system do some actual work. Let's go ahead and increase this guy to 10 million. Jump back to our master page. And here we can see the DOA has been reevaluated, and now we're going to get Paul Drummond involved because he has a higher uh, delegation of authority. It's important also to note that these data mappings and integration points are fully administrable and can be modified by elevated users at any time. Now, once we have an AFE has been submitted for approval, it becomes available on the workflow page. The workflow page acts, oops, leave this page without submitting, I don't need to do that. The workflow page acts as a central location where all AFE workflow interactions occur. What a user can see and what actions a user can take when they view this page are fully configurable and depend on the user's rights within the system. For example, maybe I've been set up as a financial approver of the North American region. When I arrive at this page, my view will be restricted to only those North American AFEs awaiting my approval. The workflow page also provides detailed views into the status of an AFE from the AFE's current state a workflow history, which provides a full audit trail for that AFE. Any attached documents? Oops, I think I missed my click. And any pending actions that are, are appropriate for the user who is currently logged in. It's vitally important that users have this visibility into their AFEs, because as AFEs progress through the workflow, biggest risk becomes delays and stagnation due to users lack of awareness that there may be AFEs pending in their queue. To avoid this problem, a Flex AFE Tracker heavily utilizes notifications to make sure that a user is always aware of any impending responsibilities. These types of notifications consist of, whoops, excuse me, I misclicked there, of course. Up oh, there it went. I apologize. I was being impatient. Let me go back here one second. Sorry. Okay. These types of notifications consist of action required notifications to tell users when a new AFE has entered their queue, stagnation warnings for AFEs that have been set in the queue past a specific threshold, and action taken notifications to let, a U to let AFE owners know how their AFE is progressing. Now, these notifications are also sent through a number of different mechanisms, including email, flex messaging, which we're seeing here, which is a built-in inbox, and pop-up toast notifications as workflow actions are taken. Let's go ahead and take a look at an example of these notifications now. So I'll go ahead and navigate back to the workflow page. I will find an AFE that is waiting my um, action. Here we'll look at the accounting review for this AFE. Now what we're seeing with every workflow action, we'll have a customized pop-up screen that provides the important information to the user for that step. 
What we don't want the user to have to do is to fight through clutter of data to find the data points that are of value to them. We want it to be presented in front of them so they can make a very easy and quick decision with the data provided. In this case, the accounting review is intended to make sure that the costs that are provided against the AFE are provided against the correct accounts. And I don't see any issue with this. I'm going to go ahead and approve. The workflow will be processed. And here you can see my post notification letting me know that, the, that actually I need to work on this AFE again. Now, if I had been a user in the system and someone had acted on a different AFE and their approval triggered an action on my part, I would see toast for other actions in the AFE system as well. Now, as with any business process, collecting data is important. But if that data cannot be used in a meaningful way, then the business has not really fully benefited and will still struggle to make intelligent and informed decisions. With Flux AFE Tracker, now that our AFE data is consolidated and standardized in a single location, making use of that data becomes very easy. And because we are utilizing relational and multidimensional databases, creating reports that make sense and have value is possible using many different avenues. For today's example, let's create a report to show how we are doing at staying with, within the approved annual budget based on the AFEs we've created. To do this, I'm simply going to open up a standard version of Excel, in this case Excel, uh, 2013, and I'm going to choose to insert a new pivot chart and pivot table. I will select my external data source, which will be our demo database, and tell it that I want to begin the report in cell A1. Now, obviously, many financial users are very comfortable with, with Excel, and so this should be very familiar to them. What we have here is we have a pivot table and a chart. They're going to act in unison. This means I only need to design this report for one of them, and the other piece will stay in sync. So like I mentioned, let's go ahead and create a report that will compare the AFE costs with the approved annual budget for that same scope. I'll go ahead and I'll select my AFE costs, select my budgets, and I'll go ahead and change the order so we'll get the budgets on the left in blue there. And let's go ahead and view this data by region. And then for simplicity, let's filter this data to only show the net values. And here you can see with just a few very simple clicks, I've got a report that is interesting and informative. What we can see here both in the table columns and in the bar chart are approved annual budgets for the different regions as well as any existing AFB costs against that budget. Now this is all well and good, but maybe it's more interesting if I actually want to see the actuals that have come in against approved AFEs and see how we're doing on the spend side of things. What I can then do is come up select my actuals, and just that easy, I can now bring actuals alongside my budget and AP costs for this type of comparison. And since this data is available within Flex AP Tracker, I could even configure threshold notifications around these financials. For instance, if the actuals come within, say, 10% of the total AP costs, notify the AP owner so that they can create a supplement AP if necessary, or maybe have Flex monitor the frequency of invoices and compare that to the AFE, and comparing that to the AFE completion date, begin to mark AFEs as ready for close. I'd like to show one other type of example, just to show how, how easy it is to interact with the data behind the scenes of Flex AFE, and some neat things you can do. So let me go ahead and open up this machine real quick. And what we have here is a separate data set for a North American onshore that is collecting their data geographically. And what we can see here is we have data actuals versus budget actually plotted on a map as well as on a bar chart. And as I interact with one or the other, the other type of, of uh, reporting item will stay in sync. Now this is a very useful, handy, and quite honestly attractive way to be able to view your data. Building these types of reports are ways that you can have informative and interesting data and present them in a way that will keep people's interest as well. Now, this has been, these have been examples of creating ad hoc reports to my liking. But there are, of course, many reports that will be utilized by many different members of the business. For example, inspecting the efficiency of the AFP process by seeing how much time AFPs are spending at each point in the workflow. But these type of canned reports can be created and exposed to the Flex AP Tracker portal, <clears throat> excuse me, for general consumption. If I navigate to my reports page, I can see an example of this by providing AFP summaries. This ensures, if I scroll down to an AP, excuse me, this ensures that 
All users can view the same data via a common reusable report, as this page would be accessible to anyone as configured. So I hope this has been a useful demonstration of the power of utilizing Flex AP Tracker to improve your digital maturity and increase business, uh, excuse me, increase business efficiency. And with that, I will hand it back to Sarah. Excellent. Thank you, Mike. Let me switch back to our PowerPoint. So Mike did an excellent job of demonstrating how the Flex AFE Tracker solution streamlines the authorization for expenditure process by automating workflow, increasing visibility, and quickly generating reports for analysis. This solution speeds expenditure approval time and enables process automation for improved efficiency, productivity, and performance. And it's also important to note that although our example was highly targeted to oil and gas companies, this solution can work across many different industries for tracking and managing expenditures. The, the solution has shortened the process of reviewing, approving, and signing AFEs by more than 50% in one of our clients. With our experience and expertise in helping organizations improve business processes, we can help you start powering efficient growth tomorrow. We will now answer any specific questions that you may have regarding any of the information we covered, um, whether it's about the process in general or about the product that Mike demonstrated. And you can submit those questions via your chat box. So let's see, Mike. Um, if I'm on vacation and I delegate my approvals to another team member, um, can I change them when I come back and how would I do that? So typically when a user will leave for a certain amount of time, um, they will use a feature of the AFE tracker and really build on the Flex framework um, we call proxy. And if a user leaves for a certain amount of time, they can actually put a user in their place with the similar roles and similar approval capabilities for that specified amount of time by use of proxy. And it's just a transparent process. They set a start date, an end date, and that user will automatically assume their roles within the system. Okay, great. Um, second question. How is data constrained to ensure that people only see what they need to see for their role? Yeah, so that's interesting. So within Flex, we actually provide a security matrix that is administered by elevated users. And what that means is that, so in the example I gave earlier, um, the example of maybe I was provided DOA approval for a certain region, maybe North America. And so I could be uh, constrained to only view the data inside North America. Now, in addition to that, since we are integrating with additional systems and primarily accounting systems, when we bring in accounting information, we will actually bring it in and transform the data to fit into the Flex solution, meaning that that data that's brought in from accounting can also be used to fit that same security model. Great. Um, is it possible to customize the business model? Yeah, in fact, uh, the, the, that's one of the key steps we do whenever we put one of these uh, instances in place, is we will customize the business model, meaning the data model so that we're, A, capturing the data points that are of interest to that specific customer, and making sure that we can provide the exact reports that are important to that type of customer. But we'll also customize the workflow as well. Because what we don't want to do is we don't want to come in with a preconceived notion of what their AAP workflow should be. We want to allow the tool to conform to what their AAP process actually is. Excellent. And how many reports can you create with this tool? So what's interesting is that since we primarily build the tool on top of the Microsoft SQL Server stack, um, there is no limit to the number and types of reports that you can, you can create. So for instance, today I used obviously just Microsoft Excel and pointed to the database. In the portal for the canned reports, I use SQL Server reporting services. But because it's built on top of SQL Server, any third-party reporting tool that a company may have already invested in, as long as it can point to relational or possibly multi-dimensional databases, you can report of it with Flux.
Okay, that looks like that is all the questions that we have for today. Um, <coughs> thank you all for your time and attending. We will have this recorded webinar up on our YouTube channel later this week. And if you have any additional questions, feel free to contact us. Our telephone number is 832-476-6250. And our email address is info at altius-usa.com. And you can read more about our company and our solution plus AFE Tracker on our website at altius-usa.com. Thanks again.